Germanicus was one of Rome's greatest generals and served as a politician. Yet, he had a problem with Nius Calpurnius Piso, who was trying to undermine his authority. However, he did what he could in the unstable political and geopolitical complications. I will cover his actions in the eastern provinces from 17 to 19 AD. What did he do before his journey and during it? What were the situations in Anatolia, Syria, Armenia, and Egypt? How did he try to respond to them? What was Piso's role in Roman Syria? What was the rivalry between Germanicus and Piso? What happened after Germanicus' death? Background In 17 AD, Emperor Tiberius recalled Germanicus from his campaign in Germania, possibly for several reasons. He probably had a paranoia about his success, the unstable situation in the eastern provinces and client states, the unpredictability of conquering Germania that continued few valuable resources, and tempering his enthusiasm for conquest after revenge on Varus in Tudoburg Forest at 9 AD against the Cherusi Prince Arminius. He won on Itis and the Angravarian Wall and raids. On May 26, 17 AD, Germanicus had his triumph, a celebration of a military victory. These victories made him popular with the people and possibly more so than Tiberius. Germanicus was on a chariot with his five children, including the future emperor Caligula. After that, he became Imperium Maius, greater power, and was above the political and military leaders. Also, he was Pontifex Maximus, high priest, and Flamen Devorum, a priest worshipping a god. He blessed the temple of Spes and served as the patron. Finally, Tiberius appointed him the position of Orienti Prepositus, Eastern Prefect. Journey In the fall of 17 AD, Germanicus left Rome for Brundisium, and his wife Agrippina the Elder and Gaius Caesar, future Emperor Caligula, joined him. Tiberius needed him to stabilize the situation in the eastern provinces through diplomacy. Also, it was a way to keep an eye on him through Nius Calpurnius Piso, who was to succeed as Syrian governor due to Quintus Cecilius Metellus Creticus Silanus' death. Germanicus' entourage contained his inner circle of administrators and commanders, bodyguards, friends, his wife Agrippina the Elder, and his son Gaius Caesar, the future emperor Caligula. Comes, Count, Publius Vitellius commanded Legio II Augusta and Legio XIV Gemina. Quester Publius Suilius Rufus, Praetor Quintus Servius, Tax Auditor Gaius Silius, former Praetor Quintus Varanius, and Vibius Marsus. First, Germanicus left the port city of Brundisium to travel on the Adriatic and encountered Drusus Julius Caesar in Dalmatia. During the journey, storms affected the ships and went through repairs. Germanicus visited the Ambracian Gulf, which was the place around the Battle of Actium in 31 BC between Mark Antony and Octavian, future Emperor Augustus. Then, he went to Athens, and since it was a Civitas Libera, free city, he had one lictor or bodyguard. Germanicus dressed in Greek clothes and was casual and lauded the Athenians. His actions helped his popularity. In Nicopolis, he learned about his position as consul for the second time and Tiberius, his third. It had a large, increasing population and contained Hellenistic elements, statues of the Greek gods and architectural style. After his time there, he went to Euboea and Lesbos, where Agrippina had her last child, Julia Lavilla. While she stayed in Lesbos, Germanicus visited the region around the Marmara Sea, Byzantium and Perinthus. Initially, he wanted to see the Samothracian mysteries in Samothracia, but the northerly winds changed its destination to Ilium. However, he saw its religious sites and headed to Colophon, viewing the Kleros temple and a priest telling him of his early demise with riddles. Nias Calpurnius Piso According to the sources, he was a conniving and temperamental man. Tiberius appointed him governor or proconsul of Syria and be the adiator helper. However, Germanicus had the power of Imperium Maius, greater power. Tacitus wrote about Piso keeping an eye on Germanicus and bringing accusations to Tiberius. However, 
Tacitus did not have a favorable view of Tiberius, so his perspective was questionable due to a negative bias instead of a more objective stance. Before Germanicus' arrival, Piso went to Athens and verbally attacked the Athenians and him. However, the citizens opposed Piso. After his visit, he passed the Cyclades to Rhodes. Germanicus saved him due to a storm and dispatched triremes. Regardless, Piso did not change his negative view of him. They went to Syria and arrived in the summer of 18 AD. In Syria, Piso became the father of the legions, using money for the troops, putting in competent military leaders, and weakening discipline. To make matters worse, his wife, Placinia, watched military drills and continued the verbal assault on Germanicus and his wife, Agrippina. He knew about the situation but focused on Armenia. In the winter of 18 AD, they were in Cyrus, Syria, the Legio X Fratensis stationed there, and tensions were high. A good example was the meeting with Aretas for Philopatris, from the Nabataean kingdom, favored Germanicus and Agrippina, and gave heavy gold crowns, light ones to Piso and the others, Piso's voice was heard declaring that the banquet was being given in honor of the son of a Roman emperor, not of a Parthian king. At the same time Piso flung aside his crown, adding a long diatribe on luxury which, cutting though it was, Germanicus tolerated, yardly eighty. During tribunal meetings, Piso was in a few of them and clearly disagreed with Germanicus. Anatolia In 17 AD, the situation in Anatolia was unstable. Kings Archelaus of Cappadocia, Antiochus III of Commagene, and Philippator II of Cilicia died. In Commagene and Cilicia, the people split between Rome annexing it, the nobles favoring and the populace opposing the decision. In response, Quintus Severus temporarily became a propraetor until Commagene became a part of Roman Syria. In Cappadocia, Quintus Varanius became governor and turned it into a Roman province. He gained auxiliaries from the Alla I Augusta Colonorum and the Coors I Augusta, composed of soldiers from Galatia, Albrecht 613. Two names changed, Gangra to Germanicopolis and Caesarea Bithynia as Caesar Germanice. Germanicus might not have gone to the remnant of the Pontic Kingdom but met emissaries under Queen Pythodoria. Armenia Parthian king Artabanus II overthrew the Armenian king and Parthian prince von Wons I, and Archelaus might have supported it. Tacitus described von Wons as acting like a Roman, and Artabanus had the support of the nobility and was popular. Von Wons tried to defeat him but failed, as a result, he returned to Armenia. Syrian governor Silanus overthrew him to stop Artabanus from attacking Armenia. Since there was no Armenian king, Rome and Parthia could use their choice to exercise their influence. The Armenian nobility sided with Artabanus, and he wanted to put his son Oroda. In response, Rome chose Prince Zeno of Pontus, the son of Polemo I and the son-in-law of Archelaus of Cappadocia. At the time, Oroda was the governor of Armenia. According to Tacitus, Zeno had been in Armenia since boyhood. He favored Armenia and was popular. Unfortunately, Tacitus did not say. Likely, Pontus and Armenia had contact, and Zeno was in Armenia Minor, part of Pontus since 35 BC under King Polemo I. Germanicus' army might have consisted of Legio XII Fulminata and Danubian soldiers, and common practice allowed client states to give troops. Here are the additional possibilities. Commagene's army was not high, with few auxiliaries from Galatia, some from Pontus, and the real Augusta Germanitiana, cavalry wing. What was unlikely was Piso giving Syrian auxiliaries due to refusing to help Germanicus. On the other hand, Germanicus likely had no legions, which was a possibility. In the end, Germanicus and Artabanus agreed to have Zeno as a compromise, and Germanicus crowned him as Artaxias III. A homage to Artaxias II for killing Romans in Mark Antony's Parthian campaign, which was for Parthia and Armenia. Unfortunately, Tiberius and Piso opposed Zeno's candidacy, and Piso supported von Wons. 
He saw it as a slight on his authority to keep Germanicus in check and propagandized it to attack him as a Parthian. Nevertheless, Armenia was under Roman influence, and Parthia did not go to war against it. In addition, Rome recognized Artabanus. To conclude, it was a win-win for Rome and Parthia. The numismatic evidence presents a Roman coin of Germanicus carrying a spear with his left and placing the crown on Zeno's head to coronate him as Artaxias III. Also, it acknowledged Germanicus, Tiberius, and Augustus but had no dates. As for the Armenian coins, Artaxias III had his name and was on a horse with his tiara. There are three possible theories on the dating of the coins. 1. The production took place in Germanicus' time. 2. H. Mattingly and E. Sydenham theorized Caligula's reign due to giving Armenia to Parthia early in his reign to Artabanus and including the style and historical circumstances, Albrecht 625. Also, Mithridates the Iberian was caught and had Tiberius backing. The final one was from Claudius Principate because he regained Armenia to Roman influence. As a result of regaining Roman influence, the Senate wanted Germanicus and Drusus for his diplomatic efforts in the Danube a triumph. The problem was triumphs were for military victories. Suetonius used the word divinco, conquer, however, it was likely a metaphor to describe diplomatic success. As for von Wons, he tried to return to Armenia to go to Scythia. He was in Pompeiopolis, Cilicia, and used hunting as an excuse to escape. However, he failed and reached the Pyramus River banks, and the Roman cavalry prefect Vibius Fronto and a soldier Remius caught him. Possibly, Vonon's bodyguards killed him due to some prearranged plan. He died in 19 AD. In the same year, Artabanus emissaries met Germanicus to establish friendly relations and be Rome's ally, which he accepted. They used the treaty from Augustus and Freates IV, which brought peace between the two sides since 20 BC. Egypt In 19 AD, Germanicus visited Egypt, and Tacitus' annals viewed Germanicus' purpose as tourism. However, the edict and papyri texts proved his care for its well-being. There was a famine in Alexandria, and he responded by unlocking granaries for the people decreasing grain prices as a means of price controls. Tiberius heard about his adopted son wearing Greek fashion and talking casually and wrote a letter to Germanicus as a repudiation of those misdeeds and the worst offense. Going to Egypt, the emperor's private property, without his permission due to being a high-ranking official Augustus law. There were two reasons, a potential rival in Egypt as a grain supplier. However, the prefect of Egypt, Gaius Galerius, allowed him to come, Germanicus being a prince. Meanwhile, Germanicus was in Canopus, east of Alexandria, acquired ships, provisions, and lodgings, and enforced strict discipline. His secretary, Babios, gave his orders. After the preparation, he traveled the Nile River and received Tiberius' letter. The second place was Memphis to see the pyramids and the bull Apis, and the third was Thebes. He saw the ruins and the inscriptions about Pharaoh Ramses II's Egyptian kingdom to its greatest extent. A priest translated the hieroglyphics to Germanicus. The fourth was the Colossus of Menmom, the fifth was the Fayum Oasis. The sixth was the first cataract of the Nile, and the last two destinations were the Elephantine Island and Syme, Aswan, which were the limits of Roman Egypt. Syria. Antiochia, a, or Antioch, was a trading and industrial city. Near there was Seleucia with its harbor, Pyria. Antioch was wealthy and had fertile land for trees and vegetables. It was on the west of the eastern end of the Mediterranean, seafood products. Germanicus inhabited a suburb west of Antioch called Epidaphne. It contained the Leyden Springs, a grove, and a villa. He was in the same one that his grandfather, Tiberius Claudius Nero, lived in forty years ago. There was lax military discipline and a heavy tax burden on Syria and Judea. He enforced strict discipline and lowered taxes. In 137 AD, 
there was the inscription on the Palmyra Tariff, which used a uniform, fair currency, AES. Return to Syria and Death After his journey to Egypt, he returned to Syria. He found out Piso weakened the legionaries' discipline and put incompetent military leaders. Also, he sabotaged Germanicus' decisions, which deepened the rift. Germanicus suffered his first illness but recuperated. As a response, the people made sacrifices for him. However, the second illness was the last. Piso decided to go to Seleucia and waited until Germanicus' death. He wrote a letter to Piso condemning Piso for his actions. Initially, he seemed to recover but died in Antioch on October 10, 19 AD. Tacitus and Suetonius stated Germanicus believed Piso poisoned him. Nevertheless, we do not know the exact truth. Aftermath A funeral was in Antioch, and Germanicus died as a popular man. The eulogies were about his virtues and the similarities between him and Alexander the Great. Piso returned to Syria and tried to further undermine Germanicus' diplomatic efforts with Artabanus II. As a result, Tiberius reluctantly allowed an investigation and a trial. Before receiving a sentence, Piso died in 20 AD. Please like, comment, subscribe, and enable notifications to my channel for more videos and see them promptly. Follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and my podcast on Podbean, Roman History.